Welcome to Electron Line, and in order for us to understand a little bit better the voltages and phasor diagrams, I put up an example here and actually went through a numerical example because when you do a numerical example, usually things become a little clearer. Again, we have our circuit here. We have a, an oscillating voltage supply, has a 100 volt maximum voltage output, RMS voltage 7.7 .7 volt at 60 hertz. And because of that, we have an X sub L, a reactance of, for the inductor for 300 ohms, a capacitor reactance of 200 ohms, and the resistance of 200 ohms, just to make the numbers easy and round. So now we have what we call, at the instant that time starts at t equals zero, this is what the phasor diagram looks like. The voltages across the components, the capacitor, the inductor, and the resistor, will be 90 degrees of, uh, out of phase from one another. Notice the voltage across the inductor comes first, 90 degrees behind that is the voltage across the resistor, 90 degrees behind that is the voltage across the capacitor. But since the Capacitor react the inductive reactance is the largest of the three. It tends to lean towards being an inductive circuit, and so therefore the voltage of the whole circuit, V, which is 100 volts max, is ahead of the current in the circuit by the phase angle phi, which can be found here. The phase angle is the arc tangent of the reactance divided by the resistance. Remember, the reactance is simply the difference between the inductive reactance and the capacitor reactance, and by plugging those numbers in, we get an angle of 26.57 degrees, which means in this circuit, the voltage is 26.57 degrees ahead of the current. So it's an inductive acting circuit. Now, what are the instantaneous voltages across the circuit? Remember, when we want to find the instantaneous voltage, we project the voltages onto the horizontal axis. And right away, you can see that there's no horizontal component to the inductive voltage and the capacitive voltage, so those two at this very moment are equal to zero. There's zero volts across the inductor and zero volts across the capacitor at this moment in time. The voltage across the resistor, since it's along the x-axis, would be the full length of that vector right here, so the voltage across the resistor is simply the current in the circuit, which can be found by taking the maximum voltage of the circuit, 100 volts max, and dividing it by the impedance. The impedance is simply the square root of the resistance squared plus the reactance squared. And so this ends up being 223.6 ohms in this example. So that gives us a current in the circuit. We multiply the current times the resistance. That gives us the voltage across the resistor. So it's 89.44 volts across the resistor. And what is the voltage across the whole circuit? Well, obviously when we add those three up, the total voltage should be 89.44 volts but also we can find it by projecting the voltage of the whole circuit onto the horizontal axis. So we simply take the maximum voltage here, which is 100 volt, and multiplying times the cosine of the phase angle that gives us this component of the total voltage. 100 volts times the cosine of the phase angle gives us indeed 89.44 volts, which is simply the sum of the three components at that moment in time. That should work no matter where we are in the phase. And so let's say that we allow time to go forward a little bit, so we have a that, the, that we're now 20 degrees into the phase, so we allow enough time to go by so that the whole phase is turned by 20 degrees. Let's now calculate the voltages of each of the three components. So, instantaneous voltage, and I was using a blue pen, so I'll continue that. So let's calculate the instantaneous voltage in this situation. There we go. All right, so first of all, the voltage across the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is going to be equal to the voltage of, across the resistor at maximum, which we know is 89.44 volts. So 89.44 volts, but we have to multiply that times when we project it onto the axis. The angle here is 20 degrees. It would be the cosine of 20 degrees to find the horizontal components. So that will give us the current voltage across the resistor. So 89.44 times the cosine of 20 degrees is 84.05 degree, uh, volts. 84.05 volts. That will be the voltage across the resistor after we have enough time let go by so that we're now 20 degrees further into the phase of the circuit. All right, now what will be the voltage across the inductor? That will be this projected down here will be equal to that. So voltage across the inductor is equal to the total voltage, which is 100 and 34.16 volts times the cosine of. Now notice we're going to get a negative value. So we can go ahead, actually it's not going to be the cosine because the phase angle, the 20 degree angle is this angle right here. So this would be 20 degrees 
which means that this here is 20 degrees and that's the opposite side of, of that angle so we have to take the sine of 20 degrees we're also going to get a negative value so we want to put a negative in front of that because we know we're going to get a negative value times the sine of 20 degrees and that will give us the current voltage across the inductor 134.16 times the sine of 20 is 45.89 volts minus 40 to get that right 45.89 45.89 volts all right how about the voltage across the capacitor well that's going to be this projected onto the horizontal axis again this here is a 20 degree angle which means this here is a 20 degree angle so we need to take the maximum value the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle to get this value right here and so that would be 89.44 volts 89.44 volts multiply times the sine of 20 degrees and that'll give us the voltage across the inductor which in this case is going to be positive 89.44 times 20 take the sine equals 30.59 volts now if we add those three together that should give us the total voltage of the entire circuit so let's go ahead and do that so we have 84.05 minus 45.89 minus oh, plus 30.59 equals so it's 68.75 volts 68.75 volts now we can also find the total voltage across a circuit by taking this voltage right here and projecting it onto the horizontal axis so v total is going to be 100 volts because that's the total voltage put out the maximum voltage put out by the uh, supply voltage supply now we have to multiply times the cosine of the phase angle plus the 20 degrees and the phase angle is 26.57 degrees so the cosine of 26.57 degrees plus 20 degrees so I have to add those two angles together and that should give us the same value as that let's find out so we take 100 times the cosine of 46.57 degrees 46.57 take the cosine equals and I get 68.75 volts that's exactly what I was expecting to get 68.75 volts so that gives us at that moment in time after we have enough time let go by in the, and so that the circuit has now gone through 20 degrees of its total cycle we can see that the total voltage of the circuit is 68.75 degrees and we're also able to calculate the individual voltages of each of the components on the circuit at any point in time and that's what phasor diagrams are so good useful it allows us to calculate the voltage at any point in time by just looking at it and projecting the voltage down to the horizontal axis and that's how we do that hopefully by now that's starting to make some sense to you